I'm Michael Greco. I'm a professional photographer in Los Angeles, California. I've been shooting pictures of professionals, movie stars, and models for over 20 years. During that time, I've had to learn and invent ways to store, retrieve, and archive my work using different hard drives, flash drives, memory cards, and solid state drives. This is one of the short videos I made for howtoarchive.com that'll show you how to be more productive. Today we are discussing the way I set up my email so I can access it from any device and all the devices are synchronized. Previously, I've talked about the best solutions on how to store, archive, and access your data using remote and local-based storage systems. In this video, I will explain how and why getting your mail synced between all your devices can save you time in addition to helping you manage your communications much more efficiently. And being efficient makes you money. Email has become one of the most important sources for communication, both in business and our personal lives. The amazing thing about email is that it has become the second most important thing that people do online, second only to browsing, followed by downloading, voice over internet, and video streaming. I used to feel lost by not having an internet connection, but the reality is I'm often on planes or in places where there is no internet connection, and I need to be able to see my email on my device at all time and get work done. And as time goes on, we're relying more and more on our mobile devices, our iPads and iPhones and things like that to deal with our email. So I needed to set up an email system that would give me access to my email when I was on the move. But let's go into a little email basics. There are really just two types of email accounts. There are free accounts. These email accounts are most often offered by major search engine companies and require no payment or website hosting by the user. I highly recommend that these accounts should not be used for business email or important personal communication. Why? Free accounts are more prone to hacking and routing problems, such as denial of service attacks. This means you will not be able to forward email or receive emails to your free email account during the attack. Also, you do not own the content of your emails, nor can you control the security that is used to protect them. So instead of a free account, I prefer a paid or self-hosted account. These are paid for services that come from companies who provide hosting for websites or paid email services. These are the best to use and they also provide a much more personalized and professional name. My email comes from michaelgreco.com and that makes me look like a professional. It also gives me the ability to use things like info at michaelgreco.com, something I could not do with info at freeemailhostingcompany.com. You know the companies. Here's how I set up my own email system and recommend that you set up yours. When you set up an email account, you will be given the option to use a POP or IMAP account to receive your emails. IMAP means Internet Message Access Protocol and works as an online store and access system. POP means Post Office Protocol and it basically works as a download and delete system. The other word you'll hear a lot is SMTP, which means Simple Mail Transfer Protocol and is the standard way to send email via the internet. Both the POP system and the IMAP system allow for downloading and storing of email on at least one device. But only IMAP allows for the syncing of the email to multiple devices from the email server because the email actually lives on the server. I've customized my IMAP system to do a number of cool and useful things with scripts. Scripts are simple rules that can be set up inside your email program. They allow the email program to sort and file incoming emails in a number of useful ways. I get a lot of email and I really live on my email. So I have to set up scripts to address my needs. For instance, I have a script that routes my newsletters into a bulk mail folder so they are not in my inbox, clogging up my day and slowing me down. This way I can read the newsletters later when I have the time. I have another script that puts all my Amazon, PayPal, and eBay correspondence 
in their own mailboxes. These scripts become an automatic filing system. I never have to touch my mail and file it. I use another script to keep my email program running on my main computer 24-7. This is the computer here, and it actually filters everyone's mail in the office. I also recommend and use a spam filtering software that provides the control over what is not and what is considered spam. You do this by training the email program to recognize good emails over spam. Spam is the unwanted email from dubious sources that you want to go into a junk mailbox. Bulk email is the wanted newsletters that we discussed earlier that I want to go into my bulk email box to read later. And I don't recommend or use a mail server spam program because they increase the chance that an important email could be lost due to the filter used and rules set. It's harder to find spam filtered on the server level also because you have to log into the web interface to see it. It's not in your email program on your computer. I also suggest that you archive and store your emails outside of the email program every so often. Just like documents, pictures, and videos, your email can be backed up and stored and archived on your local or remote hard drives for future use. As I stated in my previous videos, that I prefer to use local storage solutions over remote storage solutions for a number of reasons. When I back up my email on local drives, I make a number of folders that can be accessed and used after the main mail server is cleared off of old messages. Without an email backup, you'll never know until it's too late that you have lost an email that you needed. In my email program, I also make folders that can be easily identified by their name, like email archive. I never throw out a correspondence. I leave it on the server. I just throw out the newsletters and the junk mail. Email opt out. Email that requires me to reply to opt out of a service. Email to print. This way, if I'm on my phone and I want to print something later in the office, it's in a folder. By having these folders on the server, any of my devices can put mail in these boxes. Another folder is email to train as good. This was email that was originally received as bad or spam and needs to be recognized as good. This requires the email program to have a learning filter attachment that recognizes the server providing emails good and not spam. Email to train as bulk. This is if a newsletter didn't go through the filter and I want to add it to the filter later. I put it in this email box and later I can go and add it to my filter on my email program. Email to train as spam. Again, the filtering software, the spam filtering software will look in that box and will actually learn that this is spam and it should be put in the junk mail folder. I also make sure that my email account has a web-based email client associated with it so I can access my email from someone else's computer without downloading anything to that computer, just like logging onto the web and viewing your email. I rarely use the web-based interface to my IMAP servers because I carry my laptop, phone, and tablet, but once in a great while I find myself without access to my own machine, and this allows me to get access when all other means are not available. Once you get the hang of using your email program, creating scripts, and backing up your communications for future use, you will start to see the increased benefits of using IMAP over POP. Be sure to check out my other short videos on howtoarchive.com.